It's on our phone. We have news on social media. We have negative news, biased news, fake news, all kinds of news. <laughs> fake news. Did you know that we consume way more bad news than good news? Way more bad news than good news. Media studies show that bad news far outweighs good news by as much as 17 negative news reports for every one good news report. So this is, this is a known thing. We are geared to want to see bad things. We are geared to want to look at bad news. And this is true. Catastrophe news has way more clicks and views than any other news. So while bad news may sell, good news does change everything. Bad news spreads quickly. It spreads like wildfire. It gets attention. But there have been times in history where good news spreads even more rapidly than bad news would and changes everything. So May 8, 1945, World War II, Europe, in Europe it came to an end. As the news of Germany surrendered reached the rest of the world, joyous crowds gathered to celebrate in the streets, clutching newspapers that declared victory in Europe. It's called VE Day. Later that year, President Harry S. Truman announced Japan's surrender at the end of World War II. The news spread quickly, and it, news erupted. Everyone was so excited all over the world. It spread all over the world very quickly. Then they signed on the USS Missouri, designating that they had won over Japan. The newspaper headlines read, Peace. This is what it says. We have it on here right now. You could actually you could pull that up. There's a picture. Peace. All over the world. Now, peace is a good word to describe what happened here. It gets the point across. There was a new sense of relief, a sense of calm, long-awaited peace. The gospel of Jesus is the same thing. Peace. The good news that because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross, because he rose from the grave, we can have peace with God. Peace knowing where we will go when we die. Peace knowing God personally. Bad news sells, but good news changes everything. So we're in our last week of Empty Grave. This is the final week of the series, and we've been looking at what happened uh, before the resurrection, what happened uh, before the crucifixion, that is, and everything in between up until the resurrection, which we're talking about tonight. This is a good time to reflect and evaluate. In our anchor scripture, which we are going to be reading this uh, in small group tonight. Take the glasses off, please. Thank you. <laughs> we're going to read our anchor scripture in small group tonight. It's Matthew 28, 5 through 6. This is it. Then the angel spoke to the woman, don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He's risen from the dead, just as he said what happened. Come see where his body was lying was because he rose this is the foundation of our faith guys this is the whole thing that jesus rose that the grave is empty and because of that we have life everyone in here hold up your bible y'all have them tonight by the way too we put a couple more in here so this is the word of god and we believe it amen so last week we learned about what jesus chose for us you guys could go ahead it's matthew 28 we'll turn there right now so go ahead, open that real quick. But last week, we learned about what Jesus chose for us, how he chose to endure the cross, how uh, he chose all the suffering that we saw. For those who saw the passion, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, it was very graphic. We got to see what that was like. And wow, what a powerful night that was. I just want to take a second and say that. That, like, you could, like, feel a pin drop. Like, or you could hear a pin drop. It was just dead quiet at the end there because I, I think we all really felt that movie, we saw it with our own eyes, what Jesus went through. But today we're going to read about the best news headline of all time, that Jesus rose from the grave miraculously, the good news. That's what the title of today's message is, the good news. And I believe as we look at this passage of scripture right now, we're going to see three key things that the good news has built in directions for us. These are the directions, the three key directions. Come and see, go and tell. And make disciples. I'm going to say that again. What's up, guys? Come and see. Go and tell. And make disciples. That's the three directions. So the first direction. Let's read it together. Matthew 28. Come and see. This is what it says. Early on Sunday morning as the new day was dawning. Say dawning. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. 
For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear because they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the woman, Don't be afraid, he said. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. This is our anchor scripture. Just as he said what happened, he is risen from the dead. Come and see where his body was lying. Come and see. We need to first come and see for ourselves what the good news of Jesus is really all about, what the truth of this is all about. So we read early on Sunday morning, it's about to dawn, days dawning, and Mary, and then the other Mary, go to the tomb. I just love that the Bible sometimes says things like that. You know, you got Mary, Magdalene, and then the other Mary. Now, I'll explain this for a second. So the other Mary was the mother of one of the disciples named James. And another funny thing about James is he was called James the Lesser. <laughs> like, dang, you got the other Mary, and then you got James the Lesser. So I guess because she was the mother of James the Lesser, she was just the other Mary. <laughs> but that, that, we're told that in Mark 16. But to give you some context, if you guys read right before this, you'll see that Pilate orders soldiers to go to the tomb and guard it. Because the chief priests, they were worried because Jesus had said time and time again that when he would die, he would rise from the dead on the third day. So the chief priests were like, here's, here's what's going to happen. We think the disciples are going to come and steal his body. So to stop that from happening, we want some soldiers to guard the tomb. And Pilate's like, okay, you got it. So they have soldiers guard the tomb. They roll a two-ton stone in front of this tomb and seal it, and there's guards there. It is extremely unlike, unlikely that 11 dudes, okay, because minus Judas now, would come fight Roman guards and roll a two-ton stone away. Extremely unlikely, okay? So this is a picture, actually, of what Jesus' tomb uh, would have looked like. This is um, one of the tombs from that day. This is an actual tomb uh, over in Jerusalem. So you can kind of see what it would look like. It had... Uh, that round stone shape. That was most likely what it would have looked like. Now, in saying come and see this, I have to show you this because it's just interesting. Just let me nerd out for a second. Just bear with me. But it would be wrong if I didn't talk about this. So now on the inside, you can kind of see that this is what it would have looked like. They, they had different uh, sections in the tomb. And then they had a place where the body would lie. Now, the other parts of it, I believe, are where they would put the bones of the family. That's, what, that's how they would do it. But So Jesus would have probably laid to the right there, like in the picture. And now, this is really interesting. Regarding the actual location of Jesus' tomb, they narrowed it down to probably two places. This is super interesting. Just listen to me. So there's, there's two places, two tombs. The one is called the garden tomb. It was found in 1870. They found this tomb, and they're like, oh, you know, it's close to what we think was Golgotha, and, you know, that's probably where it was. And my entire life, I believe the garden tomb was the tomb. I think we have a picture of it. That's the garden tomb. That's what it looks like. You could go visit it this day. They have tours there. Um, most Protestant Christians believe that this is where the tomb was. But... I believe this my entire life, probably up until recently, because I did a whole lot of research. Now, if you go to the next picture, this is Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Now, listen to me on this. That is not what the tomb would have looked like. But this is super interesting. Now, when Jesus was crucified, he would have been crucified outside of the city walls. So the tomb would have been outside of the city walls. So for years, people were like, oh, this isn't the site. It's not the site. It's not the site because it's inside the city walls. Well, here's what happened. They built a city over top of this site and expanded Jerusalem in the first century. So Roman government came in and actually to mock Christianity, they built a temple on top of the site. This is real thing. You could look up history on this. So they came and they built a city and they built a temple of Jupiter over the alleged site where Jesus' tomb was because they wanted to stop Christians from all around the world gathering because it was a known place that this is where it was probably at where Jesus would have risen from the grave. So Christians were gathering, and for the Roman government to snuff that out, they built a temple on the site. <sighs> Crazy. Now, the Roman government changed. Constantine comes in, and Christianity becomes the main faith of the Roman government. Constantine goes, you know what? 
let's rip down that temple and find the tomb. So he orders the temple to be destroyed and, and deconstructed, and then they dig through the foundation, and what do they find? A rock tomb that would have looked exactly like Jesus' rock tomb that would have been outside of the city at the point of Jesus' life. Super interesting. So what they did was they built a church on top of the site and built that weird shrine structure over top of where the tomb remains would have been to protect it, and they sealed it up, and only up until 2017 did they open it. It was closed for centuries. Yes, real quick. They, they built, uh, well, they built a church, I should say. They built a temple of Jupiter, which was a Roman god, on top of the site at one point, and then they tore it down and then built a church on top of it because it was like a, a war of who could claim the site. So that's why they built the shrine. Yes, real quick. It's allegedly thought that, but that's a whole separate topic. But, but yeah, it's super interesting. Anyways, okay. Now to run this point home, it doesn't matter necessarily where Jesus' tomb was. It just matters that he rose from the grave. But it's super cool. Okay, so study that on your own. <laughs> okay, now back to our story. The tomb had a huge stone. The disciples would not have been able to move this. They wouldn't have fought the Roman guards off. It just wouldn't happen. So this is silly to even think that. Now, we, re we read that there's an earthquake, an angel appears, rolls the stone away, the guards fell over like dead men, and then the angel tells the greatest news of all time. Jesus is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. That's the gospel, right there, that he's alive. Now, how does this apply to us? Come and see for yourself. Come and see. Realize what it means that Jesus rose from the grave. Realize what this really means. You see, Muhammad didn't raise from the dead. Buddha did not raise from the dead. Jesus Christ rose from the grave. Do you know what this means? Everything he claimed about himself is now proven because of what, he's, what he did. When he rose, that validated everything he said about himself. He said, I am the Messiah. I am the one who was supposed to come, the root of Jesse, the son of David. I'm, I'm coming to die for the sins of the world, and I will rise again on the third day. And then he did it. He fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies, and he did it. He validates who he is. So that means it's true because of what he did. Jesus paid for all of our sin, that we could be forgiven of it because he rose. It proves it. The next directions in the good news are go and tell. This is what it says in verse 7. And now go quickly, say quickly, quickly, and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I've told you. That's the angel speaking. The women ran quickly from the tomb. Ladies in the house, just say, hey, the ladies ran quickly. They, they were on a mission, y'all. They were ready to get this done. They were frightened but also filled with great joy, and they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. As they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. They ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him, and Jesus said, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. As the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and told the leading priest what had happened. A meeting with the elders was called, and they decided to give the soldiers a large bribe. They told the soldiers, you must say Jesus' disciples came during the night while he was sleeping and they stole his body. If the governors hear about it, we'll stand up for you so you won't get in trouble. So the guards accepted the bribe and did what they were told to say. Their story spread widely among the Jews and they still tell it today. There are a few things that people claim against the resurrection over and over and over again. And actually, something interesting, any time that there's a book written about a different way of the resurrection or oh no that that's this is a more likely thing that would have happened it spreads like wildfire because the devil wants nothing more than to try to discredit this but it is silly too there is so much documented evidence of this we have the original writings which there are tons of copies tons of copies of manuscripts of the gospel that are eyewitness accounts of the resurrection then in uh the new testament further on it says that 500 people at one time saw jesus risen from the dead the mass hallucination does not exist by the way like even if people would all hallucinate at the same time they would not see the same thing it is impossible 
for there to be any other explanation through history than Jesus rose. And the priests wanted to cover it up. They just wanted to brush this whole thing over, just like we talked about with the tomb. The Roman government, they wanted to just brush the whole thing over. They wanted to cover it up, build a, build a temple on top of it, try to snuff this whole movement out. But it never works. It never works. Now, the women, they're told to go. And now, I want to tell you two things about this to notice. For one, angels tell these women. Now, in this day, women were not held to high esteem. They just weren't. So what I want you to see here is that God uses men and women. He told the women. He said, go. He told them to basically be the first evangelists of the gospel. He said, ladies, go tell the guys. Go. And go quickly. That's the second thing. God was empowering the women, making a statement He uses men and women for his purposes. But another thing, the women are told to go quickly. There's urgency to the message. They got to go. And Jesus appears before them. He meets them on the way. And what's funny is he actually kind of says, what's up? Because it it says that he just greeted them and it was a common greeting of the day. So it'd be like Jesus just walking up to you and being like, what's up? (laughs) So it's, it's awesome. And then Jesus tells them, go and tell. Now, this is a sad thing that has happened in the church. And I'm talking about the church at large. A sad thing that has happened in many places is they say, well, you got to reach some level of maturity before you say anything about Jesus. Oh, you have to pray this many times. Or, you know, you got to mature in your faith a little bit. You're still a baby Christian. You got to mature a little bit before you go tell anyone and understand the theology and blah, blah, blah. These women didn't understand anything of what was happening. And the angel and Jesus himself said, go and tell. He sent them. The women didn't understand all the intricacies of exactly what was happening. Here's what they knew. Jesus was alive and he was who he said he was. And they knew him personally. Those are the things that validate you to go and tell other people. He's alive. He is who he said he is. And I know him. That's it. I'm not saying don't have good doctrine. I'm not saying don't read the Bible and understand the word of God. That's super important. But I'm saying knowing Jesus is enough for us to go. We don't have an excuse. And don't let anyone give you an excuse. We are to go. A spark and wind can create a wildfire, right? And a new believer in the Holy Spirit empowering them to go can turn the world upside down, which you guys have done, by the way. I can't tell you how many people I've said, I, we say it every week, we're a small army, but I can't tell you how many other people I've had come to me and say, man, they're like a small army. And I never said that to them, but they see you guys and they're like, y'all are a small army. And you guys are, you're going and reaching people and it's awesome. So go. Now we see that when the women were on their way to tell the good news, the true news, there was bad news and fake news brewing. The chief priests, they just wanted to cover it all up. They wanted to make up a fake lie. Now, again, play this out in your head. Roman guards asleep on a post would not happen. While they're guarding the tomb, they would not have been asleep. They actually probably would have died if that were the case. The disciples sneakily go up to the tomb, okay, with their clunky, blumbering friend Peter. Okay, I doubt Peter could be quiet for five minutes. So that would not work. Okay, so say they get to the tomb. Now let's move a two-ton stone. Not going to happen. Oh, and do it quietly and not wake up the guards. Does that make any sense? No, it doesn't. There's no other explanation. How does this all apply to us? You see, the women, they went with fear and joy. They were frightened but also filled with great joy. Don't let fear hold you back from going and telling others about Jesus. Don't let fear hold you back. The next directions in the good news are this. Make disciples. This is what it says in uh, verse 16. It says, then the 11 disciples, remember Judas, he ain't there no more, okay? Judas is no longer in the building. They left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him. But listen, some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you and be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. We're told to make disciples, a.k.a. teach each other how to follow Jesus. 
That's what it is. So the 11 disciples, they go to Galilee, and they're worshiping Jesus, but some of them doubted. Now, I'm very thankful that that's in there because you know what? That describes every church service of all time. Some come in, they worship, they, they're passionately loving God and worshiping him, and some of them are standing there going, oh, I don't really know why I'm here. You know, the Bible's read, people are changed, people take it to heart. Some people go, oh, I don't really know about that. There's an altar call given. Some people give their hearts to the Lord. They're on fire for Jesus. And some people go, I don't want that. I've seen it happen. Every church service of all time, that's described right there. They worshiped him, but some doubted. So this is what Jesus says about this. In John 20, 29, he says, then Jesus told them, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. See, when Jesus said that, there was a guy named Thomas. And he said, you know, I'm not going to believe unless I see the nail wounds in his hands and I put my hand in his side. And Jesus said, I'm here. Touch it, dude. Come here. Feel my side. Feel my hands. And he says, my Lord and my God. And that's when Jesus says that. You believe because you've seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Guess what? That's all of us. We are in the day and age of believing without seeing him. But the Bible says we walk by faith, not by sight. And guess what? One day we will see him. And I look forward to that day. Jesus then says, I've been given all authority on heaven and in earth. Go and make disciples. How does that apply to us? It's basically saying, go while you're on your way, make disciples. Tell people about Jesus. Train them in the faith. While you go about your every day, while you go and do whatever you do, make disciples. While you are on your journey, tell others about Jesus. Teach him his ways. Disciple them. Show them to follow Jesus. Read the Bible. Pray. Show them to have a relationship with him. While you're going, make disciples. Journey out. Yeah, I had to do it. I'm sorry. Journey out. That's what that is, going out. That's why we do that. That's the whole basis of this entire youth group is this scripture. (laughs) We go out. And then Jesus says, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, baptism is not what saves you. It is an outward expression of your faith. But Jesus says to do it. And then Jesus says this, and this is a guarantee. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The greatest news has directions in it and a guarantee that he will be with us always, even to the end of the age. That's something to celebrate. The resurrection of Jesus is good news because it means that Jesus is who he said he was. He came as God in the flesh. He always existed. He was born into human form. He validated all these claims. He lived a completely sinless life. He made himself to be the perfect sacrifice for our sin, died on the cross for all of us, And then he rose again three days later, just like he said. When we just turn from our sin and put our faith in him, we're forgiven of it all. And he fills us with his Holy Spirit. We can look forward to heaven. The good news has directions. Come and see. Go and tell and make disciples. The good news has a guarantee. When we know him, he's always with us. Amen? Let's pray. Bow your heads. Lord, we thank you right now. God, I thank you for everyone in this room. And Lord, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your presence in this place and that we could gather around your word and learn from your word, Lord. We thank you that you've risen from the grave. Thank you, Lord. And as you're praying today with your heads bowed, maybe you're thinking, PJ, you know, we're talking about all this stuff and, you know, Easter time and the resurrection and all this, but, you know, it never really connected with me. And I needed reminded of this tonight, of what it really means. Maybe you've been feeling down. Maybe you've been feeling lonely. Maybe you've been feeling hopeless. Listen to me. We have hope today because Jesus is alive. What he has done, we have hope. He's good. And he's always there for those who believe. He's with them always. Maybe you're here and you want to tell others, but you're a little scared. You're scared of what people will say. You're scared of what people will think. 
Remember that the women went with fear and great joy. Don't let fear hold you back. If you're here and you want the Lord to just strengthen you with his good news and give you courage to spread it, just raise your hand. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Great. Let's pray right now. Lord, we just thank you for this time. God, I thank you for everyone here. God, I thank you for those who just raised their hands. And Lord, right now, I just pray that you would move in this place. Touch us tonight. And maybe you're here with your heads bowed and maybe you've kind of slid back a little bit. I don't know. Maybe you feel you've slid back in your faith and, you know, maybe you you haven't been totally walking closely with Jesus, but you want to make a fresh commitment. You want to say, Lord, I want to be all in and I want to go. I want to do what you tell me to do. If that's you, just remember the grace of Jesus is greater than anything we could ever do. And if you just want to make that, that fresh declaration of saying, Lord, here I am. I'm here again. Help me. If that's you, just raise your hand. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Here's what we're going to do. If you guys just want to come to the front, a- a- anyone who raised their hand, we're going to just sing this song. We're going to pray and just worship. The Lord is here. He's with us tonight. And we could seek him. So come up to the front. All throughout my history Your faithfulness has walked beside me The winter storms made way for spring And every season from where I am standing I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. Help me remember when I'm weak. Fear may come, but fear will leave. You lead my heart to victory. You are my strength, and you always will be. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. I see the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sin rolled away because of you, oh Jesus. I see the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless. All my sin is rolled away because of you, oh Jesus. Oh, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life. All over my life, I do, I see, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life. All over my life. So why, 
Should I fear all the evidence is here? Oh, why should I fear all the evidence is here? Oh, why should I fear all oh, the evidence is here? Oh, why should I fear all oh, the evidence is here? I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. Yes, I do. I see. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. My life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. Yes, I do, I do. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. God, you're so worthy. And Lord, we thank you that we can be in your house tonight. Lord, we thank you that you've moved in this place tonight and that you've touched us. Draw us closer to you. Lord, help us to just go deeper in our relationship with you. And God, I pray that you would just Bless us in our week, Lord. Touch everyone here. Help them to not forget what we talked about this week. And Lord, as we're coming to celebrate Resurrection Sunday, Lord, I pray that you would draw us all back here safely. And we just thank you, Lord. And we love you in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. 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 Bless me. Amen. <laughs> You're back. All right, Santa's going to come. He's going to do announcements. And then we'll move on to small groups and the rest of the night. Give my man your full attention. You get the mic because you're official like that. That's right. That's right. What's up, guys? Do we have any first timers today? I don't think we do. Um, Bible plan. Do we have anybody doing the Bible plan? Come on, guys. We need some more hands for Bible plan. Get on that. That is true. But it helps a lot. It helps a lot. It helps a lot. Um, come to church Sunday morning, 10 a.m., Easter Sunday. Don't miss it. You do not want to miss it. It's all right. If you don't got a church... On Sunday, come here, 10 a.m. That is right. I'll be giving testimony. Uh, new events coming soon. Stay, stay tuned. Stay tuned for some events in April. I feel like now it's going to be a competition between me and Tara. Who gets to announce the new events? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Um, speed the light offering. 
New goal, 3,500. Four hundred ish. We gotta get exact numbers, PJ. What? I, I got you. We I, got... I, I update it every like few weeks. Okay. Talk to Diane okay. Get an update, but I know that it's like at four hundred. Four hundred ish. Probably. I didn't want to give you like a number that wasn't real, so I just. Yeah. said four hundred ish. Uh, yeah. So let's let's keep on giving to that. There's a QR code if you don't have cash on you. Uh, if you feel like you need to give. So let me pray for the offering and then we'll pass the bucket around. Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Lord. I thank you that all it takes is for us to put faith in him and we're saved, Lord. And uh, I want to pray over the offering. Give... Uh, the amount to everybody in this room, Lord, what they should give, Lord. And uh, may they give it with their full heart, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. So once the bucket is uh, done going around and you guys give and